Hello, welcome back. So, my um, one of my old friends sent me a picture of some kind of like a screenshot uh, from TikTok and asked me if I could make this for her friend. And I said, yeah, absolutely, I can do that. Well, I wasn't 100% sure how I was going to achieve it, but I was able to do it and I wanted to record it and show it to you guys. My best friend from eight, since eighth grade it has her own little salon uh, as well and so I made her one to match her theme of her salon so let's get started so I started off with these 20 ounce aluminum spray bottles and I will have everything linked down below so you'll be able to find them and I just spray painted them um, the colors that I was going to use which was white and this uh, like champagne gold and then this one I was going to do like a brown a metallic brown and a gold silver gold kind of mix. And so I just put epoxy on them just as I would anything. And I will explain later how I attach these on the arm. I did not do that in the beginning, but we'll go ahead and glitter. And then I will definitely show you plenty of times how I put it on. So here I am starting with my glitters. Um, this one is, I'm going to be using Vacay Chunky and Fine. And I'm going to be using Similar which is a beautiful white holographic-y kind of it just it is it's gorgeous it's one that you definitely want to have in your collection this is all from the glitter ranch everything is down below as far as discount codes website everything you need i will have it listed so this is i'm starting with the chunky and i'm just doing a typical ombre this was the color she wanted and so i just let it fall a little bit um, down into the white there was a few there that kind of went a little bit astray and I did end up pulling them down with my weeding tool there it was like that was a little too high for me so so then as always I came back through with vacay fine ultra fine and I sprinkled that all in just to give it a full completed look uh, fill in any kind of gaps or anything but that's why you paint it you paint it the same color so that just in case you have a full coverage on everything. And that's basically all I did was just kind of filled in wherever it needed to be. I didn't let it go too far into the ombre look because I wanted more of the white going down in there. And this white is called Similar. And it has like a golden kind of holographicness to it. And I really thought it was going to pick up a lot of that champagne gold that's down in the bottom of that with that vacay color. And I just thought it would give a real sparkly look to the top part of this bottle. Uh, it's hard when you're just using a white. And so this one just really gives such a shimmer that it really... It just really makes the white a little, a little less boring, if you will. So, but anyways, that's from the Glitter Ranch as well. That is down below. There's a discount code for you and everything will be listed. So, now this one was a gold and brown. Um, the salon that she works at has like a French Quarter kind of feel to it. And so, well, it's actually called French Quarter. But anyways, uh, but it, it has this like kind of old world kind of feel to it so I wanted this one to be a little bit different in, as far as style I didn't want to just go you know animal print or whatever so this is from the outlaws from last month if you did happen to get that that mix of outlaw glitters this was in there this was a mix and it's it's got a gold and like a silvery diamonds literal diamond shape that are in there and so it gives like the silver and gold you know contrast and you really it doesn't look like the silver is in there but then all of a sudden it's like you turn it and it's like all the silver pieces just kind of come into view it's really cool it's real kind of I don't know it's just very unique colors it was really cool to work with it and I really wanted to work with it to see you know how exactly how it kind of flowed and what it looked like so I really like the way that this particular combination with that brown and gold and silver all came out. So then I have been dying to use this metallic uh, cup of Joe. They have, I have had cup of Joe uh, holographic for a long time. And then she came out with the metallic 
cup of joe and it's just this beautiful chocolate brown and i've been dying to use it so this was my opportunity <laughs> but i did not do an ombre on this because i wasn't going to be leaving it as an ombre i was actually going to be doing a stripe down the middle so i didn't do i didn't bother with trying to get it you know ombre or anything like that so now i am going in with the cup of joe fine metallic the ultra fine metallic to fill in any spots that need to be filled in and i literally just went kind of to that half mark and that's all i did i didn't do any kind of ombre here so just fill in where it needs to be just so you get a full coverage so here i will get into how i put them on the turner so i took electrical tape and i covered up this like plastic screw top piece that was on the very top because i didn't want epoxy or anything like that getting up in there and affecting it by any means or in, in any way so i made sure that it was covered with electrical tape and then i took my bottle top and screwed it on and then i screwed the top piece or that little end piece of the pipe you know the and i'll put i'll have everything listed below for yeah i got it at home depot and so that's just basically what i did and my is a three quarter inch pipe and those bottle caps worked beautifully on the bottle itself and then they worked beautifully in the three quarter inch uh, little end piece there little female end piece i just screwed it in and it screwed on tight and it kept it kept it perfect on the turner so this is the second coat of epoxy that i was putting on here so i basically i right after i got done with the glittering i let it dry and then i sealed it with polycrylic and then i went right into the first coat of epoxy maybe like a few hours after it had dried with that polycrylic so this is the second coat of epoxy uh, i didn't get to film the first coat and then i realized and so i went over the bottle cap attachment piece before or after that first coat of epoxy and then this is the second coat of epoxy so i want to go over here in just a minute about how I got all the way down into that very top part where the it the, they're both screwed in there to the bottle I mean the bottle is screwed into the pipe so I will definitely show you how I go in with a paintbrush and make sure that we get as much epoxy down in there as possible but not touching that black plastic piece that's already there that holds the spray piece you know that you screw the spray piece on so we will go over that and i will show you that i use like a little bit of acetone and put it in the acetone right after just so that you can save your paint brushes but i did use a paintbrush from the dollar tree because i wasn't about to <laughs> use something fancy just in case if it did ruin it in the end so here I used just a thin uh, paintbrush, something I got from the Dollar Tree, and I just slowly kind of pushed in to that in between the bottle and the screw top there and just barely put a little bit on there. I've got this sped up, so please don't think I'm doing it this fast. I'm actually doing it quite slow and quite meticulous to make sure that I'm not getting epoxy on any of that screw top piece on the on the top part of that bottle and to make sure that i'm blending it well and see that's where i put it in my little bit of acetone there to make sure that i don't have epoxy all over it when it's over so it doesn't dry with epoxy on there so if you follow me on tiktok or my group you might have already seen this but this was really uh, a very unique moment <laughs> in my tumblr making career i saw that there was a bug on that bottle when I it was sitting to dry and so I was coming to, to take it apart this was late at night and I was undoing everything and I was trying to film it so that I could show you guys what um, I was doing and how it works and how I to take the tape off every single time every single time I do a coat of epoxy I take the tape off and take the bottle cap off and everything and then I genuinely was going back to get this bug off of here and it was moving 
<laughs> and so I threw it. Because I did not... It wasn't like I was scared of the actual particular bug. It just... I was not expecting it to be moving like that. So, that was fun. So, for some reason, I do not have the video where I put... Where I cut this strip, this vinyl strip, and where I put the fleur -de -lis on there. But, I mean, honestly, it's very self-explanatory. I cut with a cutter you know, just a paper cutter. I just got that green vinyl out and I decided, you know, I just measured the space there and was like, okay, I want it to be, you know, an inch and a half as to take up that much space. And so that's what I did. I just cut it at an inch and a half and then just wrapped it around the turner. I mean, the uh, cup and I mean, ugh, hold on. I wrapped it around the bottle and then I sliced it where it was on the back side, you know, uh, from the other side of the fleur de lis. The fleur de lis, I actually printed on um, printable vinyl, which I'll have that linked as well, the, the one that I get off of Amazon. But because I was only doing that one little piece, I'm not going to waste a whole piece of paper. So as you can see there off to the side, that I printed another one of those fleur -de -lis just in case, just in case if I messed up or something got ripped or whatever. I made that, uh, I printed another one, but then I also printed my logos that I put on the bottom of my cups. I printed a bunch more of those. So that's how I utilize, I don't waste one piece of paper, uh, you know, for just one little thing. No way, I'm not going to do that. So here I actually cut the, um, the piece that was in the middle, like I cut two lines to go on the top and the bottom, but I actually didn't think that I was going to do a line in the back, but it just called for it. It was like a metallic, really shiny metallic vinyl. And I didn't like that you could kind of see the line. So I decided I'm going to just go ahead and put another piece of vinyl going down the middle there just to kind of make a line in the back. And so I just cut the middle part in between the two lines that whenever the Cricut cuts it, and I just cut that piece and, and used that and it worked out perfect. Now this one I actually filmed <laughs> all the process. So I, I measured around um, and I measured just that little piece cause I was gonna be doing a name and I was gonna be doing an SVG, which the SVG I will just uh, tag uh, I think it, I got it off of Etsy or whatever, and I will just tag where I got it and you can buy it if you would like. So I was cutting, I, you know, cut some, uh, some, uh, leopard spots and I will definitely link those in my group. I will have those added up so you can, uh, you can get those. You can just download them and, and use them to your heart's content. And I was cutting those with that chrome, that black chrome that I love. I love, I use this all the time but anyways I cut it on that because I didn't want it to just be that black which is exactly why I use this chrome all the time because it just gives like a shininess but I will link that down below as well I have a lot of links on this one because there was a lot of stuff that I used here and a lot of uh, little odds and ends and different things like that so I uh, had a name and an SVG and I had the leopard spots. Now I do a little bit something different with these leopard spots and I'll show you. Actually first I did the name and the SVG first and I just put those on like you would anything, any other name, any SVG, you know, transfer paper and lined it up, made sure it was secure. So now to the leopard spots. So anytime you've watched me with leopard spots, I always put them on by hand because I just feel like it's the best way to do it or I'll put them on in little bunches but because this was like so straight up and down and I knew exactly where they were going to go and I knew that the the sizing was going to be perfect I just went with it so I cut this at a, an eight by five because I, I didn't like the way they looked with the four and a half which is the amount of space I was going to be using was was four and a half but 
I went ahead and cut it at five because they were looking like stretched out and kind of weird looking. So what I did was I just cut the five and then I cut off the bottom piece there. As you can see, I set it off to the side and then I was going to use that bottom piece as the piece that would kind of fit in around the back side where I was going to do about an eight and a half. But I figured, no, I'll just do eight and then I'll do four, I'll do five and then I'll have a little bit of extra to add on the back and it worked out perfect. And I just sliced any of the ones at the bottom or anywhere that needed to be cut and made sure that it was nice and smooth on the bottom. So I went over this several times because I wanted to reiterate the fact that I literally untaped this and unscrewed it every single time to make sure that no epoxy was getting stuck to the tape. Although I was very meticulous on making sure that my little paintbrush wasn't getting up to the tape, but I literally every single time, every coat of epoxy, I took this off, took it off the little spin turner thing. I unscrewed the cap and I took off the tape and I put fresh tape on and went into the next coat. So I just, make sure because you are not going to be able to take this off of the turner and get that tape off of there in case if it is stuck that's why I was so careful when I was doing it and then that's why as soon as I could touch it I would take it off and take that tape off so that I could ensure that no epoxy was getting stuck so then I went in with my usual I put Mod Podge to cover up all of this especially because it's like a you know that chrome that holographic -y. it's not holographic but that's the best way I can explain it it's like a metallic and so I made sure that everything was covered with Mod Podge and made sure that I did not get too far up into you know the top part so that you could have a secure hold or on the bottom as well so I just covered the spots and then I covered the fleur -de -lis and I covered the stripe and made sure all of that was covered as well with Mod Podge and a good nice coat of Mod Podge. You want to make sure there's no, you know, holes or gaps or anything like that. So I kind of have to go over it over and over and over and over and over again to make sure that it is like getting sealed really nice. So once again, I went into a coat of epoxy and I actually did two coats of epoxy because the bottom part where the glitter, I tried not to get too much glitter on the bottom, but around the edge there I had a few little spots where I had to sand down and uh, do another coat of epoxy so I ended up putting two more coats on top of the other two coats that were already on there and you can see down at the bottom there I have the paintbrush and I have a little thing of acetone and a little cup that I poured out of my little acetone bottle and I put it there so that it would be a reminder that immediately when I got done with putting the epoxy on with that paintbrush that I was going to stick it in that acetone so that it would not cause any kind of, you know, so it wouldn't get stuck. It wouldn't get, you know, cured with epoxy in there. So that's why I just put that there so that I wouldn't forget. I wouldn't throw it down. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, dang it. But I also, like I said, use something from the Dollar Tree. So if it was, it was not that big of a deal to throw it away. But I try to keep things as long as I can in this business because you're just constantly going through supplies. So just a tip. One other thing I wanted to go over was right here was make sure even when you're doing the epoxy part of this that you are trying to keep this as level as possible and it, before you get done and before you throw your glove away and you just leave it to spin I would take a look on the side and make sure that it's as even as possible because while you're moving it around and it does get kind of unscrewed a little bit on the top and it kind of goes awry on different spots just I mean it goes you know like up and down so just make sure that you are trying to get it as level as possible before you set it to spin for the rest of the time so I just used that remainder bit of that epoxy in the cup I didn't even really save that much it was just basically the remnants that were on the side as I was scooping it out onto these two bottles and a couple of cups that I was doing on the side there so I just once again took my paintbrush and just very slowly put it on the inside there making sure I wasn't getting the tape 
or anything like that be very careful with this moment it will help you you don't want to cause problems in the end and there they are well this is one of them my friend was said she took it around the her little salon onto all the other girls there and we're kind of was showing it off to them saying that it was so pretty and it really did it really does say French Quarter to me and it really looks awesome on sitting on her desk so I'm so happy she loves it so and then um, my customer ordered this and she loved it she was so excited so I she came to pick it up the other day and I already have another order placed with a black and red one so I'm so excited about that these are super easy super fun please join my group do comment and I will see you next time